Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm weird. Whatever. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram. And let's get into the video. Right? Welcome, 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 people. What's going on? How y'all doing? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. I'm back. Yes, girl, I'm back. I'm back from... From a little bit of a tour, y'all. A little bit, little, little piece on the Unwind with Tasha K tour. I don't know if you saw me and Jamie, that's me, girl. <laughs> but we set the internet ablaze, bitch. Nah, y'all was mad. Y'all was mad in the comments. And we didn't care because we did great. It was fantastic. We had a great time. We work well together. Shout out to the Ooh Ladies first panel. We will be taking a break this week. <clears throat> but don't fret none. We'll be back um, in... In December, I believe we've decided not to forego taking a break for the full. No, we'll be back in November. I'm sorry, y'all. November. I can't keep track. I'm going to Ghana next week. I'm just trying to <laughs> keep my head on and get my work done, child. Okay, that's all I'm trying to do. It's good to see y'all, though. I'm glad y'all coming in. As y'all come in, make sure y'all like the video. Yes, girl. Bondi Blue's back. <clears throat> I appreciate all my bonbons, all my people that showed up. Okay, that was in the live, that was there at Tasha's show. Okay, people that wanted to take pictures with me and hug me and all of that. It was it was crazy. Okay, it was a lot, and it's only going to get better. So excited. Me. Okay, listen. At one point, me and somebody, me and you, was never a part of my kid. Like it was cool. <laughs> I had a great time. Make sure y'all come through for Tasha's next show. Tasha's gonna have another live show. I'm not sure when. But I should be there. The plan is that I should be there. Okay? Um, got to be there. Got to be there in the morning. When you say hello to the world. Okay, listen. Now, if y'all know, I just did a Bondi Blue show. With uh, Love and Mary Huntsville. Okay, not a Bondi Blue show, y'all. Did Love and Mary Huntsville with some little Bondi Blue show gossip topics on the end. If you're a member of my channel, you might have saw that. There was a link put up. If you didn't, make sure you go and check it out after this live. That's for everybody. Okay, this is a for everybody live. So as y'all come in, please make sure that y'all like the video, share the video, like in the video. Make sure that YouTube know you enjoy my content. And to put it on the For You page because, girl, they won't put me in your algorithm <laughs> that's what I heard. I heard that that they won't put me in the algorithm for people sometimes, and they absolutely should. So make sure y'all like the video so they'll they'll bump me up up there on the recommendation page. I appreciate everybody. I sure do. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. All right. Make sure you're subscribed. Now, I wasn't sure because we literally just discussed this. Um so I think I'm I, I'm gonna wait on it. I'm gonna wait on it. Hold up, because I got a whole bunch of stuff we need to talk about. Understand we're gonna get to Carlos and Erica's interview last. Okay, I have made notes. I have listened to most of it, and then we're gonna watch the rest together. As to not you know watch this man's whole interview on my channel. Um, I'm just not in the business of doing that. Okay, anymore. I don't I don't like to do that. Uh, so yeah, hold up, y'all. I'm trying to get my. There we go. There we go. That's what I was looking for. All right. Let me let me turn around, wrench around. Let me wrench around. Is that me? Is that the that's not me. Where the hell is my camera? Where's my camera? Here we go. OK. Child, I got to I got to move stuff around. Y'all hold up. Boom. OK, here we are. And are we ready? We're ready and we're starting. OK, we're starting. We're starting off with Jay-Z. A question that's been on the internet, it's been floating around for years now, I feel like. If you had the opportunity to take a meeting with Jay-Z or to get a million dollars or 500000 child, I can't remember which one it was, but which would you prefer? 500000 in cash or share meal with Sean, Jay-Z Carter? And a lot of people are confused on this, and I feel like take the money. I've always felt like take the money. There's nothing this man is going to tell me that the $500,000 can't pay for. You know what I'm saying? Like, in my in my mind, in my mind. 
people are always trying to trick you, you know, and make you think that they're smarter and they got something figured out that you don't have figured out. Yeah, no, fuck out of here. Take the $500,000. And as he said, go and listen to some of his albums. Okay, let's hear what he had to say. Line, Jay, I'd love to hear what you think about this. If you had a choice between getting paid $500,000 in cash or lunch with Jay-Z, yeah. which would you choose? You got to take, take the money. What, you gonna, what I'm going to say? Yeah, you know I mean, everything now I'm going to say. No, everything? no, only because people say, of course you take, you take lunch with Jay-Z because the wisdom that you would get from him would, would be so uh, beneficial to you. There would yeah. only be a matter. You but, would take the money. Yeah, because you. you got the you got all that in the music for for ten ninety nine. That's a that's a bad deal. I would I wouldn't tell you to cut a bad deal. Like I don't take know. the five hundred thousand or for free on YouTube. You can go and stream it anywhere. You can go and stream Jay Z albums damn near anywhere for free if you wanted to. Okay. So what he's telling you is he didn't gain he didn't gave you a, like a handful of knowledge for nine ninety nine, and you up here asking him for more. He told you everything he could tell you in the albums. Go buy some albums and listen to the albums. <laughs> it's all there. If, if, you, okay. you, if you piece it together and really listen to the music for the words, for what it is, it's all there. Everything that I said was going to happen, happened. Everything that I said I wanted to do, I've done. And th there's the blueprint. The blueprint literally to me and my life and my journey is, is there already. There's something. It's in. The music, okay? So everybody that was, you know, really thinking deep about this and didn't know, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Are we going to take the 500000 or the meeting with Jay-Z? Nigga, take the money. Leave the cannoli, okay? Bondi, did you ever talk about D-Wade saying it's still hard for Gabrielle to accept the break? No, I did not. No, I did not. I have not, and that's because I have not saved the post about it. Um, so I don't want to speak on it. All right. I appreciate you, though. I do. I'll add that to the list because there are always more videos for me to do. OK, let's move on. There's something else. There's something else. Wait a minute. OK, I'm spreading my stuff out this week. So don't fret none. If we haven't talked about it yet, don't worry. Why are groups trying to get back together? Y'all just trying to replace people and y'all trying to get back together, even though we know it's not going to happen. In real life, in real life. I love you too, Ken. And, and I want nothing but the best for you all personally. And I want nothing but the best. <laughs> Genuine cannot take him seriously mm. right now. Mm. For the people who look up to us, for the people who follow us, yeah. for the people who are inspired by us. Yeah. You're taking too long. People who are just connected to us. You're standing here talking to me with no met. shirt on for too long. The way we seal that legacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The only way to do this, let's get on. Let's do it. Come on, sing all. Sing all. Sing Let's do it. This is the only reason I would ever like to see Tyrese sing off. Can you be the best man? Can you be the best man? Lies. Don't believe anything Tyree says. Don't believe anything Tyree says. Also, don't believe anything his ex-wife Samantha says either. Stay tuned. We'll be talking about that close to the end of the week, okay? Hold on. Okay, so let me explain. If y'all don't know the saga that is TGT, <laughs> Tank, Genuine, and Tyrese have been trying to be a group ever since they did a song together in the 90s for the Best Man soundtrack, okay? Killed the shit. They even came out with an album together. These are literally three of the most vocally talented artists of the 90s, right? Tank, Tyrese, and Genuine, okay? <laughs> You know, niggas that know how to sing in the back of the throat, okay? So, you know, and from way up and through the diaphragm, you don't get 
many people that are singing way up and through the diaphragm, right? So everything was going fine. And then Tyrese decided that he wanted a bigger portion of the money because even though they are a three-part harmony, three-part harmony, this nigga felt like because he was doing Fast and Furious movies, he should be getting paid more. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Fucking up the whole thing. Because Tank, being a producer and a writer, having successful music in Genuine, I feel like outselling both of them, or definitely Tyrese. I feel like Genuine outsold Tyrese when it comes to a uh, record soul over a lifetime. So it was like, nigga, in this avenue, you're not better than either one of us. We've all had major success in the 90s and early 2000s singing R&B. So I understand why both Tank and Genuine told Tyrese to respectfully suck their dick when it came to breaking up the money any way other than the 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 evil split the even split split three ways which which is what y'all what's the even split three ways talk to the people y'all know I can't count nothing but my money okay I will I, I am I am not math and science I am history and English okay make sure that if you're on your workout journey don't forget about just move supplements protein shakes delicious just like mama used to make, okay? She didn't make them, but she made these flavors. Get them now. Just move supplements, okay? Link in the description box and in the comments. I thought it would be 33.3. I did think it was going to be that, but I ain't, you know, I ain't want to say that and be wrong. I didn't want to say that and be wrong. That's what I thought it was, okay? But I'm letting y'all know right now, Bondi is not perfect. A bitch cannot count that quickly. I always get with people that are better at math, Okay? Uh, to be honest, Tank and Genuine need more money because they would have to deal with Tyrese's ego. This is so real and so true, okay? Especially since Tank did more work on the album. Especially, like, Tank does a lot of, like, arranging and shit like that. Like, he, he you know, he, he makes the music. And they were making music together. They weren't just, you know, coming out with, you know, live performances, performing their own songs. No, they were making new music together. It was good. I was here for it, okay? 33 and a third. Break it all up evenly. Stop being a bitch, Tyrese, okay? Show some respect. Put some respect on those people's names. Okay, but it looks like, yes, TV, TGT is gonna come back. Okay, hold up, y'all. I'm trying to X out of something and it won't. Quick. Hold up, y'all. My bad. Ugh. I clicked something by accident. It got all fucked up. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super chat. Okay, hold up. I saw it. I saw it. I did. I absolutely saw it. Hold up. <laughs> Look, this is a moment. This is a moment, you guys. Okay, we ain't gonna play too much of it because we ain't got time for no copyright strikes. But I need, I need, I need. Okay, hey. listen. Before we move on to the next group that we didn't ask for to come back together, um, hold up, let me fix this. <laughs> hold up, why it won't it won't it won't let it won't let a nigga get out of it? Like that's so weird. How can I cl close? close the window it's not letting me close the window this is so disrespectful i'm so apologetic let's go ahead and move on to the omarion minus of it all rare sighting rare sighting rare sighting oh What's up, yo? Know the, the boys vibe. is back we, we ain't never left the boys we is ain't never back left. we ain't never left yeah man hey rare sighting rare sight mm. Mm. sighting <laughs> Not my husband commenting in the comments, Ray 2K. That nigga's funny, man. I thought, wait, hold on. There's another post. They trying to replace him with a fourth member. We don't know who the man is. We have no idea. Um, I thought I had saved the picture 
of the other young man that they had in a, in a little group photo, they said that they were going to come back with another member. It was going to be B2K all over again. I feel like they just need the Destiny Charlotte, if you ask me. I guess I didn't save it. It don't matter. We don't know that nigga anyway. But I feel like they should they should just Destiny Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? Just go to go from four to three. Go from four to three. Don't try to force nothing. Don't try to bring in another member. Just go from four to three. Because y'all ain't about to make no new music. I wonder, like, do y'all have the rights to sing music without Omarion? What is a whole show of B2K going to be with, without Omarion singing in the dark on his own? We going to get touchy fairly. I'm going to make sure you did me. We can't be busy in the dark, dark. And get your iron on. Baby, don't be iron on. I it happen in the dark. Don't be afraid when I touch you. I just want to love you. We can get busy in the dark. Okay, listen. I don't know how y'all going to do it without Omarion. I don't know how y'all going to do it without, oh, 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 oh. He got a song that just came out, I think. It's going to be the sound, girl, when it's going down. Oh, oh. Listen, no, you can't do it without Omari. <laughs> it's not a group. It's not a group that you can do without the lead singer. I'm sorry. There were no other strong vocalists in this group. Little Fizzle Pop, you were a rapper, my nigga. We have no idea what is going on with with uh with, with your boy. What, what is it? It is J Bug. We know J Boog out here fucking folks mamas. We can't never be back cool after that. We got J Raz B. Yeah, we can't trust Raz B. Baby, we can't trust Raz B. <laughs> we can't do nothing else with Raz B. Listen, Mario handled Omarion. It was so disrespectful. Omarion, you should be ashamed of yourself for being fake woke. Okay? Omarion is fake woke, but he does have a distinct voice. Okay? I do love Omarion's music, y'all. He may not be a great live performer, but Mary J. Blige wasn't a great live performer for a long time. And them studio albums were still hitting like a motherfucker. Just as Mary J. Blige went from being your cousin to your auntie, that's when she started performing good on, on stage. I will never forget the day. This was the day that after this, you really didn't see no bad performances from Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Blige performed No More Drama, I think, at the Grammys one year. After she performed No More Drama at the Grammys in the early 2000s, she never was known again for having like a bad live performance consistently. Because before that, sis would be on stage fucked up. Okay? It was known. Just like Lauryn Hill was known for being late, Mary was known for being fucked up on stage. You may not get your money's worth. Okay? <laughs> I say all that to say, all right? I don't know... What is going on with Omarion when it comes to his breathing? Because you do all of this yoga and meditation, your breathing should be on point. And your breathing was struggling when you was performing for the versus battle. Mario was, was, was sweeping the floor with your ass. But y'all, something wrong with Mario. Something wrong with Mario, okay? Mario was one of those people that, you know, wrote a witness statement for Tory Lanez. Sorry, left a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> Left the bad taste in my mouth. I know there are a lot of y'all that still seem to think that Megan did not get shot by Tory Lanez. I don't know why you feel that way. I don't know what's wrong with you. I'm not going to argue with you about it. I'm just going to put you in a box labeled delusional and we're just going to ignore you. Okay? So you can scream into the comments all you want to, but bitches, it left a bad taste in my mouth. Okay? Now Mario is on the internet. Hold up. I'm looking for it. Mario is on the internet talking about he should be. Um, I thought I saved it because I didn't save it for him. I saved it because Cisco told him to sit his ass down somewhere. Mario thinks he should be in the Mount Rushmore of, 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 of black musical artists. Like he really tried to put himself on a, a mountaintop with Whitney Houston and them. Okay, and I say in them because I can't remember who else it was. Michael Jackson and them. 
But he was like, I should be on on Mount Rushmore with Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston. And we was like, Mario, what type of cocaine are you doing? <laughs> what type of drugs are you doing, my guy? I thought I saved it, but y'all know how Instagram be. One day I saved it, the next day it's not there. Either way, y'all hear what I'm talking about. Mario, oh no, there it go, there it go, there it go, here it go. I knew I saved it, here it go. More. I'm super curious to know. Um, Guys, Ralph girls, Marshall, whoever. <laughs> Beyonce, Michael Jackson. Okay. Um, Beyonce, Michael Jackson, me. Okay, you. <laughs> All right, you put in you. You know why I say that? Hold on, because I grew up listening to so many different types of music, and my mother and my grandmother, so I got like two generations of just soul music, you know, just great R&B, you know what I'm saying, that I grew up to. So that's why I say my voice kind of, I can do a little bit of everything. I would say the fourth person would be, the fourth person would be Whitney Houston. Whitney your R&B Mount Rush. Okay, so he put himself after he put himself before Whitney Houston. <laughs> I'm going to leave him yeah, alone. Mario. But this is what Cisco said. Mar Mario could that, put himself oh. on the Mount Rushmore of R&B. Hey, there's only four heads on there. Four is heads? That, does he, does he, of, yeah, on Mario? Mount Rushmore, there's only four heads. So I don't know. Does I mean, he make it? Mario's from Baltimore, right? Yeah. Did he sell more records than me? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. Kind of, kind of, it's a, it's a, it's a numbers game, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But we, we've known. Oh, that I have everything. You can't believe it. I don't think that without the numbers, your ass can't compete. Say, without numbers, your ass can't compete. Thank you. Listen, Cisco. Mario, since he was uh, younger, he's always been a fantastic singer. Yeah. Um, and as, as an artist, you got to have that confidence. Right, right. So, hey, That's man, it. more power to you, bro. However... <laughs> You gotta sell more than a dragon coming from Baltimore if you want to be on the Mount Rush. Look at Mario. Mar Mar Mario. No, you have to. No, listen. This is what everybody doesn't understand. In this day and age, numbers and quality may not be the same thing. Back in the day, it don't matter how great of an artist you were, you likely, possibly could not outsing Whitney Houston. You could not outperform Michael Jackson or Prince. You probably could not out whistle register. Or write Mariah Carey. These were people that even though they were mainstream, they were extremely talented. Meaning that they deserved the fact that they outsold everybody. That's what he's saying. Okay? Cisco may lack consistency as far as y'all are concerned. But if we, and I don't know if you met, you know, him or not. But I'm just saying, Mario, you haven't had a hit that can compete with the thong song. My nigga, doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. Ooh, that's so scandalous. You know another nigga couldn't handle it. Shaking that thing like a loser tree. And my look in my eyes so devilish. Ah, you like to dance to the hip hop pop. The moves, me moves, and connect the dots. Not just urban. She liked the pop and she was living the vida loca. She thumps like a truck, truck, truck. Thighs like what, what, what? Baby, move your butt, butt, butt. Uh, I think I sing it again. She had. This nigga was, this nigga was singing his ass off on this song. Hey, yeah. And he was dancing his ass off, just sliding across the sand. I don't think you heard me. Said I like the way you move that thing. Okay, listen. Y'all gonna stop playing with Cisco, okay? Because on top of, yeah, yeah, how long did you come for me? Okay, if Drew Hill. Which at one point we thought Cisco was Drew Hill, bitch. They had to explain it to us back in the nineties. We was confused. Listen, and not only that, have y'all seen Cisco perform recently? Yo, I literally just saw a video of Cisco performing doing a flip with no fucking hands. Cisco's like fifty. So Cisco can still sing more records can literally flip as if the little nigga has not grown since the nineties. He's the same age. You know, 
<laughs> Mario, there are some people that should be above you, but I un I understand the confidence, my man. And you know what? At the end of the day, you beat Omarion in the verses. You absolutely did. Okay, so with that all being said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. One more, one more. Um, Because I have things spread out, y'all. So please know we're going to be discussing a lot of the things that we're seeing here. Okay, we're going to be discussing a lot of the things that we're all seeing here that I've saved. Okay? Let's go ahead and, and talk about the old girl, British Williams. Okay, L let's do that. Okay, so... British Williams, shout out to Storm Monroe, okay, because I saved this from his page at first, but then I saved some other ones, okay? Yeah, here we go. Who, who, why, what? Who, uh, Sierra, Sierra, which one of your home girls is that? A woman, y'all don't even know. Sierra, because, you know, her real name is not British, okay? It seems as if her real name is Sierra. <laughs> STL St. Louis native British Sierra oh no her real name is British just uh British Sierra girl why do I feel like you know that's still not her real name I feel like that's still not her real name but I'm gonna leave her alone okay I feel like along the way somewhere I read that that wasn't her real last name either way I mean her real first name it doesn't even matter what are you threatening to hit people for because they're recording you what's wrong with y'all what's wrong with y'all why y'all threatening to hit people? That's just unnecessary. Okay, hold up. I see I see some, some fan funding. Shout out to Crystal Maboon for being a member for four months. Yes, I love TGT, okay? Thank you, T. Ronnie, for the super chat. Oh, yes, Bondi. The way Samantha eyes was looking all up, body language was giving lies. Thank you, love, 211215 for the super chat. I thought Tank retired because he had to stop singing. No, he lost his hearing for a, a moment, but it was momentary, okay? It was not permanent. Um, Thank you, TMC Flame Girl. I cannot wait to see you next week. Um, Go off, Bondi. I used to love Incomplete and that particular run on... uh. The, the thong song, I'm sure that's what you meant. Okay, J uh, Journey to Jasmine. Thank you for being a member for 10 months. I'm so happy to be an 80s baby. We got all the good music, didn't we? Okay, thank you, Dolores. Vanessa for the super chat. Hey, Bondi, I'm so happy you were featured on Tasha K's show because now I can watch your show. I love your intelligence and perspectives on numerous topics. I will sign up for the YouTube membership soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, shout out to the winos. Shout out to the winos. Okay, so let's go ahead um, and discuss. Okay, so British, they said she has officially been sentenced to four years in jail. And y'all, she was facing 50. So four instead of 50, y'all, that's a win. That's a win. Okay, congratulations when scamming goes wrong, when you get caught because you're out here scamming. And that's why I tell y'all all the time, y'all can play if y'all want to. The federal hood will come and pick your ass up. They'll leave you alone, give you a nice long time so that they can get good long years off your fucking ass. Okay, push you up into a corner, bitch. Okay, you hemmed up. The reality star appeared in court today, today to learn her consequences after she pleaded guilty to 15 counts of various types of fraud. British was indicted by federal prosecutors in September 2021, accused of not paying taxes and underreporting the income of her businesses. She also allegedly used other people's identities to open bank accounts without their knowledge. You cannot do what the white people do, British. We keep trying to tell y'all, we know y'all think that racism does not exist. But when it comes to getting away with illegalities, with light sentences, or not getting caught, caught at all, be careful. If you are not Caucasian, it may not happen for you. Now, they catch them up sometimes, too. But I feel like a lot of times y'all think y'all going to be able to get away with this shit because white people get lesser sentencing times and shit like that. So you be thinking, oh, I'll be all right. Not realizing, girl, <laughs> they will make an example out of your black ass. Y'all don't be watching uh, uh, the BET Plus show about the queen pins and shit. You don't be watching, child. The women that have scammed and went to prison will tell you a life story that you need to learn from. Learn from it, British. Learn from it, okay? Um, After her indictment, prosecutors say she continued committing acts of fraud. 
after you got indicted, you continued committing acts of fraud, including collecting pandemic-related rent relief under false pretenses and submitting bogus medical bills to an insurance company. I guess once a scammer, always a scammer. Okay? Um, in court. British tried to show remorse, but the judge insisted that she had a fraudster mentality due to her making $150,000 a year from 2017 and 2020 off of her schemes. Okay, the judge said no. The judge said, oh, you'll go straight to jail. The judge even brought her celebrity status as a way to showcase that British was committing these crimes, fully aware of her influence on the public. Bitch, what I said, make an example out of you. Making an example out of your ass because you are on a reality TV show. And do you know how much those judges and people of that high court and education level look down on people like you? Not only are you on a reality show showcasing your life and your, and your business and putting your man on blast for money. Of course, they're going to look down on you for that. But on top of that, you're a scam artist. Oh, girl. We're going to pray for her. the four year sentence was less than the 63 recommended in the pre sentence investigation report, but significantly more than the suggestions of 18 months or even just probation offered by her attorney. As British and her family and friends left the courthouse, one of her friends was on the scene lounge, lo child lounging, lunging at the reporter recording the walk of shame, a mess. She was embarrassed for her friend, but you about to make the situation worse, bitch. Don't hit nobody. Hell wrong with you. Your friend did it. What you mad for? I can't stand when y'all be mad like this when the motherfucker did it. Please be mad like this when the person doesn't actually commit the crime that they are, you know, accused of committing. But we're going to pray for British, y'all, because jail time is, is tough no matter who you are. Okay? Jail time is tough no matter who you are. So, you know, we hope that British is able to get out, you know, soon on good behavior. We're going to pray for the girl, okay? But hopefully y'all will learn from this. All y'all young girls out there that think y'all can keep getting away with fraudulent scamming ass activities. I want y'all to take, you know, oops, hold up. I want y'all to take JT from the City Girls. And I want you to take British Williams from Basketball Wives as an example. That scamming does not pay your ass will go to jail and they will make an example out of you. Okay. Now we're going to come back for the last part of this thing. Y'all the last part of this thing is your girl, Erica Mena. Now I've made notes. So we're going to talk about the first half and then we're going to listen to this last half together. Okay. Now I'm going to take a break. Y'all take a break. Like the video, do what it say on the screen. If you're, you know, ever so obliged. Give me a second, like the video, we'll be back. Anywhere you go, anywhere you go, give it up. Anywhere you say, anywhere you say. All right, y'all, hold up. <laughs> I caught it. I caught it. All right, let's go ahead and get into Erica Mena and Carlos King's interview. I'm only doing this because this is the end of the month and I need my money. I just want everybody to know. That's why I'm doing this, okay? About to go on vacation. Need to make sure we make a little splash before the end of the month. Don't forget, this week... Y'all going to get two now that we're grown. Okay, well, you'll get one now that we're grown on Halloween. But Jason's Lyric will be coming out this week as well. Okay, so we're doing Jason's Lyric and we're doing the faculty. So 
I'll put it out there for when it's supposed to be, you know, ready for me to do because I ain't decided which day yet. I still got to make my graphics and stuff. But I'm not about to make y'all sit through this whole hour and a half of Erica Mena and Carlos and her pretending to cry at every turn, okay? Every time she talked about something, it's like she had to pretend as if she was fighting back tears. And even though, like, as a woman, y'all, as a woman, I'm going to have sympathy and empathy for any human being when they go through a certain level of trauma but I'm also going to be able to separate that from their actions as an adult. But I'm going to be able to see it. I'm going to be able to see how it happened, why it happened. But that doesn't mean lack of accountability on your part just because your life has been fucked up. Because this is one of those times where I feel like Erica was absolutely trying to use the traumas in her life in order to dig herself out of the hole she's put herself in with, excuse me, calling Spice a damn monkey on national television and standing on it, thinking that because Spice made comments about her mothering and her child that people would back her up enough for the racist comments that she made to be ignored. But unfortunately for her in 2023, Belle being pulled back more and more every day, age of Aquarius like a motherfucker, we ain't really doing this like we used to do this. Back in the day, her her you know proximity to whiteness and her preference like you know mentality and her looks what you know might have got her out this situation and hey she'll still be able to make her Tubi movies because we know the Houstons don't give a shit about black people in this way they got their own crazy stuff going on with the church okay so you know they're not worrying about you know racial issues of that level especially if it doesn't have anything to do with black men if it doesn't have anything to do with black men these black men could care less about racial issues okay or someone having you know the tendency to be racist while being on black networks working with other black you know entertainers but you're gonna speak speak words that are highly offensive to their ethnicity of people But everybody is not standing for that in 2023. All black fired her. They aren't standing for it. VH1, MTV child, MTV, because it used to be VH1, but now it's MTV. MTV <clears throat> is given we've moved her from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, but she might pop up again later. Okay? She always pretends as if she has grown past Love and Hip Hop and then turns around and gets her ass right back on Love and Hip Hop talking about Men of Mondays. I feel like it's ridiculous for her to continue to act as if she's above the network or above the show when essentially you always seem to need them to get back on your feet after you put your foot in your mouth. Yeah. And this isn't the first time that she's called somebody a monkey. Oh, no, she's done it before. People knew about it. People probably, you know, throw excuses her way growing up in New York. So she's allowed to say nigga, even though she's not an African-American or considered Afro-Latina, just because you have some African, uh, 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 you know, descended people in your family line does not make you black. It makes you multicultural. And in America, that doesn't always give you the right to attach yourself to a group of people, especially if you don't have respect for the things that they find offensive based on their respective experiences with colonialization and white supremacy. As someone so close nearby as a Dominican, Puerto Rican, whichever other island that you want to claim, while still being, I believe, racially ambiguous, closer to Caucasian, white Latina, like the J-Lo that you wanted to become. Yeah, you're, you're white Latina, honey. And you always have been. And there ain't no amount of growing up in the Bronx that's going to make you and Evelyn Lozada black enough for y'all to keep thinking y'all going to be being, you know, disrespectful to black people while making money off their backs as time continues to move on. And we we grow out of some of these, these mindsets that we've had for the longest, excusing this behavior, allowing that halo effect of you being attractive and being a preference to take hold and allowing you to continue to be in our spaces while giving us your ass to kiss as the preference. I've been telling y'all for a long time that she chooses to be friends with black women because she feels better amongst the black women because when she's with her own 
ethnicity, nationality, whatever, ethnicity of people, she may not always feel like the best. And trust me, they often don't see her as on their level as white adjacent Latinas because she's decided to go and fuck on black men, African-American black men, not the, you know, I know black Dominicans that, you know, can act like their skin tone isn't what it is. They let Cardi say the N-word too. Yes, they do. They let a lot of the... They let J-Lo say uh, the N-word, but she got too big for that shit. Because <clears throat> remember, she had to explain saying, nigga... Uh, I see y'all... Uh, what's it? I tell y'all niggas, mind y'all bitch, but they don't hear me though. On the number one song with Ja Rule. Okay? With a nigga. Talking about niggas. It was cool. She had a big ass, spicy Latina. She can say it. That's how they felt. That's how they felt, child. I know. I surprised one of my bosses one time when I was at the news station. Yes, they allow white Latinas from New York to say nigga. Yes, they do. White man with no Latin affiliation whatsoever. Be very careful. <laughs> Times at the news station, girl. Ooh. I'm just saying. Let's play it again just in case you didn't hear it. When you was working at the news station, what, what did it require? Okay, listen, <laughs> not so good times at Sweet Valley High. So the interview starts off with her crying about not being able to get time back with her son. Okay. And you know how they start off with like a little snippet from one of the, the most salacious parts of the interview, put it at the beginning of the interview to bring everybody in. Okay. TikTok like format, right? So. It starts out with her crying about not being able to get this time back with her son, King, the one everybody says that she has not raised and she left for dead with her parents. OK, so at the gate, we're getting feel sorry for me because I'm fighting very hard to keep my tears back and it hurts me in my throat. OK, all right. She said she was at the end of her contract with the network already. OK, so it was already time to wrap. Now, they had options on her, so I don't know whether they are going to take advantage of said options or it's just going to be whatever it's going to be. I'm not exactly sure, okay? That's yet to be determined, but she's talking like she's not ever going back to the network again. But she said that last time when she thought Bow Wow was coming to rescue her. She gives us her backstory, some shit that we had never heard before, okay? And this is how you know this was meant for us to feel sorry for her, and I am going to give her sympathy on the things that she's went through in her life because it is hard and it is terrible. But I also can gleam how somebody can become cold to what they've been through because it's their story and they can use it to, to, to make people feel that they are just a person that's made mistakes and please forgive me so I can make my money again. They don't want to be canceled and held accountable fully. So they're going to use the pains of their life in order to make the public empathize and sympathize with them and hopefully get them their jobs back or at least quell the public anger long enough for them to, you know, eventually come back when time has passed. Right. So understand that that's where the energy in this this interview is coming from for me. She tells us that she was born in prison. Her mom was in jail when she had her. And her mom was a hustler, somebody that ran numbers, of course, got got involved with some ain't shit ass nigga and she wanted to get a crib for Erica because Erica being the youngest out of all of the four sisters none of them had a crib so her mom tells the dad that she wants a crib and instead of him doing what men are supposed to do um pay for the crib he sends her to make a run which means sell some drugs probably um for the crib Erica says it was the wrong place, wrong time. No, your mother was doing something illegal. It wasn't the wrong place or the wrong time, sis. Y your mama was, you know, doing something illegal. Whatever reason she was doing it for, whether she told you it was for a crib or not, she was doing something illegal. So now Erica feels the need to explain her mother's background. Her mama was one of those, you know, young women that grew up raised by the nuns. The nuns are terrible. Anybody that knows anything about the nuns knows that the nuns are fucking terrible. Okay. They're mean, they're abusive, and a lot of the times kids raised by them come out fucked up. It is what it is, okay? But yes, 
Her mom asked a friend to stay with Erica and her older siblings, her three older sisters, I believe, um, while the mom was still in jail. And the friend started bringing this young guy around. The young guy was coming into their house and throwing his weight around. And her older sister, Lisa, got tired of the shit and threw his stuff out. And then the friend of her mother called CPS and they were put into foster care. So Erica was in foster care from two years old until six years old. And she says that she was assaulted by a teen boy while in foster care. And she would also have meetings with her mom. She would have, you know, visitation with her mom and they, they would take her from her mom. And it was a very traumatic experience to see my family right there, but not be able to go and be with my family. So, she gives us, you know, this backstory, and then she tells us that her stepdad is the one that came in and changed their lives for the better. But she tells us that her stepdad was her mom's counselor when her mom was in a halfway house. I said, child, <laughs> all types of ways taking advantage of people being in compromising situations, right? But it is what it is, child. However it played out is how it played out, but that sounds like a time of somebody using the situation for their benefit. I'm going to leave it alone, okay? Either her mama or the man, either way, it seemed inappropriate, something somebody should have got fired for. But like we all can tell, Erica Mena wanted to be J-Lo, okay? She wanted to be J-Lo. She needed attention because obviously she wasn't getting enough of it based on her childhood. Mama in jail, daddy ain't shit. You get a stepdaddy, but, you know, I have questions about him as well. You know, you, you're one of, of four kids. She probably got doted on for her beauty and things of that nature. But when it comes to people paying attention to kids, you, when you're formative years, two and six, that's where a lot of that shit is ingrained. Your worth is ingrained during those years. So I can absolutely understand that Erica did not have the best life and built up a lot of anger during those early years of her life, which is why it was hard for her to keep her cool. OK, so she ends up skipping school to do auditions and she gets on. Y'all know Erica's a looker. So she gets on. She starts getting little jobs here and there. She had a cousin named Marissa that was dating da David Allen Greer at the time. She said her cousin kind of made David Allen Greer. It was something along those lines. They were cutting and editing up this, you know, so much. I, I wasn't really sure what she was saying in that moment. But either way, that was a connection to entertainment for her. Then she started doing music videos. And she doesn't think that she made it um, so much because uh, she has so much more to accomplish. So she said right now she doesn't feel like she's actually made it. And there's so much more that she has to do. <laughs> so much more that she has to do. You know, holding back the tears once again. Then she tells us about her first baby father, Raul, okay? He sounded like he was a drug dealer. She really got involved with the life. He also was really close friends with Scott Disick. And y'all know that's Kourtney Kardashian's baby daddy. That is how she got on Kourtney and Chloe's show, working in their store. And so she ruined that opportunity. But he helped her get that opportunity. She says that unlike what everybody seems to think, her mom and her sister played the biggest part in raising her son. Her son is not autistic like we all thought. Okay. Um, my volume looks fine on my end. I don't want to turn it up higher and overmodulate. Um, Y'all let me know, but it looks fine on my end. Anyway, uh, yeah, I know she beat his ass up one time. They had a toxic relationship for sure. It was something that happened in a car. She bust him in the head. Child, I can't remember. It's been years. Either way, we all know how toxic relationships go down. Okay, love you too. We all know how young toxic relationships go down, especially with dudes that drug deal when you the hood, angry Latina girl. Everybody's living out their ghetto girl, drug dealer girlfriend fantasy, fighting and fucking, okay? Gets pregnant has her son, does the show, leaves her son with her mom and her sister when she works. She says that her son wants his privacy. He's introverted. He doesn't want to be attached to what she has going on. I believe her. I do think that she's in her son's life as much as she can be. I do not feel like she's just not raising him at all. I don't think that. Um, I do believe that that child is probably more comfortable with her mother at this point. And why remove the child if you don't have to? Um, 
and shit. Y'all know how that go, bitch. You you had me in prison, so you could you could you could help me with my son. <laughs> you had me in prison, bitch. You can go ahead and help me with my son, okay? Her baby father was a part of Terror Squad with Fat Joe. That makes a lot of sense as well. Um, but yeah, so then Mona wanted an Evelyn Lozada because Evelyn Lozada popped on Basketball Wives. Erica says if it wasn't for Evelyn Lozada, that she might not have gotten on to reality TV. She says that the day she met with Mona is the day that she filmed with Yandy that first day. That's why she was selling herself to Yandy the way she was. Because that's absolutely what it felt like. I'm selling myself for this opportunity. Okay? And at the same time, Yandy is being producer. Because Mona was telling Yandy that this was Yandy's fucking show. So Yandy is being producer. And starting mess between Erica and Kimbella. Telling Erica that Kimbella was talking shit about her. And, you know, the rest becomes history. So... I'm going to read some of y'all super chats and we're going to get into the remainder of the interview. Okay, hold up. Um, I'm going to do it over here. All right. Thank y'all for showing so much love today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Honey C, for the super sticker. I appreciate you. And thank you, Charm Locks, for the super chat. Y'all, that first Drew Hill album was everything. Five Steps was my fave. Cisco is very underrated, hailing from Baltimore. He is. Scholarly Talk on Life. Thank you, Dr. Elizabeth, for the super chat. As a person who had my mother and my uncle was scammed, I feel nothing for British. It isn't enough time. She has hurt people in their families. Luckily, um, I make enough to help them. I know that's right. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Y'all know y'all gonna learn one day, child. Uh, Charm Locks, thank you for the super chat. These black men allow so much BS, yet won't give black women an inch on the mile ain't no hole in my blood though i know that's right i know what you mean meaning that the latinas could bop you in a fucking head call the cops on you and everything and you would never publicly admonish them as a as a group of people y'all would never get online and talk shit about the latina women the way y'all do the black women thank you black hippie for the super chat enjoy africa my babe thanks for doing more now that we're groans Oh, my pleasure, love. Y'all know I've been trying to get them in. It's just been a lot going on, but I appreciate y'all so very, very much. All right, y'all. So let's get back in to it. Oh, do your performance and then that's it. It's like you just make the show. You leave it on the stage <laughs> and you go home. You're like, block it out. So, yeah, I didn't go into this having a game plan either. I don't know what the f is doing. You gotta remember, they literally just called me. I flew to New York to me. Like, this is one season of Love and Hip Hop. We got basketballs already. So I'm over here thinking this is like the new way of wrestling, but not actual chairs, you know? So she thought Love and Hip Hop was wrestling. We understand because you definitely came in pulling hair and acting a goddamn fool like you thought you were playing a role. We get it. I'll just go at it, whatever, say what you say, you go about your way. So when I came at her aggressively, I just thought, This is what you do. This is my character. <laughs> I got me a little, you know, like, because in real time, honestly, between me, I don't think I would have gotten at her that crazy. So the thing is that. Oh, hold up. Obviously, yeah. your goal is like. No, absolutely. The teeth are showing. The teeth are huge. I am worrisome. It's a lot of teeth. I'm the next J-Lo. Yes. So acting movie. Yes. I study yes. acting, whatever. And here I go, get a call randomly. You got a, a random call. Yan is in your ear telling you, I mean, before that, you're watching Bass, my wife. You love Evelyn. She's another Bronx girl, Spanish girl. You're like, okay, I like what she's doing. You then meet Yandy, Mona, the rest of the executives. Then you're in a scene. Yandy next tells day. you, girl, blah, blah, blah. Got you all amped up. So then when you see Kim Bella, you're like, oh, I get this is what we do. do. So that's why you went so hard in the paint. And honestly, I didn't really think I was. In the time of it, I'm just like, oh, you had a lot to say to, I'm here now kind of thing. Like, what's up? Now, mind you, I've seen Kim Bella at that time in passing because of what we do with music videos and things of that nature and things of, so like, I knew of her, but not to go at her for no reason. But in TV world, me sitting down, 
it was perfect. There was no backstory to that because no one saw what Yandy was telling me. Obviously, that was off camera. I didn't know how that shit worked. So I just went in there like, oh, this bitch been talking shit about me. I'm going to check her. Not the smartest crayon, obviously, in that moment because I didn't know what the I was doing. So when y'all were tussling, did you? Did you that part was obviously real. No, 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 not, 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 not that that wasn't real, but like, <laughs> did, did you? So I was you, like, oh, shit, this is wrestling, all right. You didn't That's think what I did to that. So y'all, because I remember, listen, I'm a fan of, a of, of, of the show. I remember it was like this. And it was like yes. hair and, and, and heels. And I thought you were like a, a green jumpsuit or something. Uh, it was a horrible gold jumpsuit. Gold jumpsuit. And, and, then... and you know what was worse about it? It was not even, like it made my ass look so flat and like just, it was just all <laughs> wrong. But that's how you know, like I didn't know what the f It didn't make your ass look flat. Your ass was flat until you went and got a BBL. Stop playing in our face. I was doing, I was just like, yo, I have an opportunity and I need to be present and make my presence known. Well, girl, you did. So what happened she after did. that fight? So after that fight was backlash, and that's when I was like, oh, shit, this ain't, this ain't wrestling. Right. I'm assuming after that, got a contract. <laughs> Wait, bitch. Just sign right here, honey. <laughs> Not the Mona voice. <laughs> Don't worry about Is it. Is that your Mona Scott Young voice? Just sign right here. But I had to sign right here. Um, Why do they keep taking this angle? This is such a weird angle for them to keep taking. Why do they keep taking this angle? Oh my God, this is so weird. Get me the fuck out of here. In the van. Not the white van. The white van. For the laugh to end that quickly. After he was laughing for that hard and then the laugh ended that quickly, it was a fake laugh. I just want y'all to know he was trying real hard to convince y'all that that laugh was real. And it was fake. Right after this fight happened. How much was your per episode fee when you signed the contract? Let's just put it like this. I wasn't even getting paid per episode. I was getting per diem and my expenses paid. I know he not running off like word on the curb is that interns is producing Love and Marriage Huntsville. Sit back down. I was the guinea pig. Oh, man, they saw me coming. Wait, stop the presses. They saw me coming. They, they saw a hungry young girl that came into the offices like, what's up? I'm ready. I'm this. I'm that. And just knew I was hungry. And so basically the same shit she was accusing Kim Bella of doing in the video modeling world, the video girl world, coming in thirsty and, and taking lower prices, taking, taking a, a lower amount of money so that now we can charge all of the girls. I mean, we can give all of the girls less money. Because now we know that these new girls coming in, they don't know any better. They don't know Melissa Ford and all of these girls are making, you know, tens of thousands of dollars per video. They have no idea. So now these new girls coming in, we're going to give them like a couple of hundred dollars payday per diem. They'll be happy to be here because they want to be a star and they think this is the way to get there. So, yeah, they basically applied the video model thing to her. <laughs> and it's just so funny because this is the reason why she allegedly got into it with Cambella because Cambella came into the, the video modeling game and was taking less money. Hey, bitch, you taking money out of my pocket. Well, it sounds like you was doing the same thing for the reality show girls. Voted it enough to be present without even having to talk about logistics and paperwork, needing a, a lawyer, nothing. They saw my ass coming. I could talk about it now because what, y'all fired me, right? Allegedly. <laughs> so you did not get paid a per episode fee. You got per diem because you weren't living in New York City. And, and legally, when you're working out of state, you at least got to get per diem. And that runs about $40 per day. And just so you guys know, per diem, when you're in the business, you get um, around 40 or 50 bucks per day. And that money is to like, you know, buy snacks, buy food, water, gum. <laughs> yeah. So you were making that? Yeah. Yeah. And I was locked into that Why for some time. So they I'm mad that he's acting surprised like this because he knows exactly how they did this. You worked for you worked at Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Why are you acting like you don't know? Made me like an extra and was using me like a main character. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I met Deanna years later. Because even after that, like there was nothing yeah. like when I became cool enough with Rich and I, you know, he even tried to help me, you know, get a better contractual situation and it, you know you're just locked in you have to wait it out and then eventually you know you bring in numbers people love you then they so yeah I was a guinea pig for a lot of stuff because if you don't I don't know if you remember but they, they, they casted this woman that was saying that she was like my madam I guess my yeah Christy one point the white girl yes 
Chrissy. Chrissy. Yes. Okay. yes. And I just feel like the fact that they allowed this woman to lie and say that I was a prostitute is complete to fame. Like you literally defamed my character for a story. But you knew her. That wasn't even credible for a story that was fabricated and maliciously put together just so she can have a little spot on the show. And I had to deal with that. Like people were really, like, and that was around the time I was dating or breaking up with Sin and it's Rich and Sin were, you know, kind of in cahoots and they were having conversations with this woman about me being a prostitute. And it's like, where is the proof of this? I've never, you know, so I feel like, and I'm not saying this because I want anybody to feel bad for me because I've been there, done that, but I definitely was used in the worst way when it comes to this franchise where a lot of things weren't considered when it came to me. And that's why, you know, I've been mis so understood on this platform for so long. Girl, it's you are not misunderstood. Cut it the fuck out. Thank you, Makai, for the super chat. I know way too many girls like Erica. They create their own demise and play victim. Being pretty doesn't matter if the attitude sucks. I agree with you there. And thank you, Miri Sparkles, like, whoa, for being a member for 22 months. Oh, Erica was projecting. Well, thanks for doing this for us, Bondi. I am doing homework right now while sick is just helping oh i'm sorry you feeling bad my love but thank you for coming through everybody make sure y'all like the video please so that y'all can you know let youtube know that we in this bitch we in this bitch thank you like you had me on this platform coming on this new girl yeah i started beef and da 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 whatever but you clearly see I, i'm inspiring I'm, I'm an inspiring artist or actress and this and a third and you're gonna allow this random woman that you feel is needed for the show with this fake story that's really not true like saying that I'm a problem and that's something that like middle America which is most of our, mm -hmm. our our consumers and our watchers they don't know the difference they, they, you you anything that's said on TV people believe it anything that's said on blogs people believe it so for a long time I had to for a while I had to deal with people thinking I was at one point a prostitute which was fuck. people think your body <laughs> count is very high they think you slept a lot of well, what's crazy it's Raul DJ Envy Rich Sin um Damn, what came out to send? A Dykeman nigga. That was a Dykeman nigga. <laughs> um, came out to bow Safari, right? Yeah. No, Cliff. Oh, Cliff. Yeah. Safari. Because I'm not afraid to be sexual. I, first of all, I love talking about sex. It's one of my favorite subjects. You're Scorpio. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. And I'm very... What did Wendy Williams said? I was sexually fluid. Is that a good way? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> You're like no gay man. So yes, I think being sexually fluid is fine. <laughs> I go with, the, see, and then that's the crazy thing, too. To actually have sex with me, I have to be into you. Because when I have sex, honey, I have sex. So I want to be able to have my fun. If I'm going to waste my time, honey, I'm going to waste my time. So for me, but at the same time, that being that, I have, it, I don't mind flirting. I don't mind wearing what I want to wear. I am, like I said, I'm comfortable with talking about all subjects of sex. I'm also very open, spontaneous, and I'm vocal about all that. And as you guys have seen, I'm not afraid to love who I love. If it's a woman, I'm going to love the f*** out of her. If it's a man, I'm going to love the f*** out of her. And also think, and, and I think prior to what Chrissy was saying love and, and love and hip hop, obviously, I feel like your first scandal <laughs> was people said you were a mistress who is Tiffany? in DJ Envy's marriage. Yeah, because mm. that came out right when I got on Love and Hip Hop. And we of had course. just broken up because wife found out, which I was totally oblivious of. I knew about the kids. Mind you, I have a kid, but I have a big daddy. And it's more common where we come from to have kids, but you're not married. You just got a baby mama or a baby daddy. So mm. I knew about the kids, and it was always told to me as his kid's <laughs> mother. Excuse me. Never wife. I believe her, y'all. I believe her. Like, she ain't got to convince me that DJ Envy was lying, scamming ass. Tiffany was a girl he and uh, she and Rich were sleeping with. Oh, okay, that probably, was it on the show? Because y'all know so much has happened on the show, I can't remember everything. But if it was on the show, it was probably a lie. It was probably all lies. And I didn't get that realization until I got the phone call. From the wife. From the wife. Why is she not she lit? Can you. anybody mm -hmm. talk to me about why is, there's no real know. lighting on her face? Never mind. DJ Envy's wife called you and said what? Um, hi, this is Gia Casey. Is this Erica Mena? I said, yes. She was like, are you and Rashawn? Rashawn, I'm like, who's this? His wife. And I remember this day because I was in New York City with a friend of mine. It was her birthday, and Envy was DJing that night. So we were actually getting ready at a hotel for my friend's birthday to meet up with him, who's DJing in the city, to enjoy her birthday. <sighs> that was, like, such. So coming out, okay, and then I just left King's Father. This was my first relationship from that. And right away, he showered me with money, gifts, trips, 
Envy did. Yeah. How did you meet Duh. her? Duh. Through a mutual friend at a strip club called Jersey Girls. Yeah, here's a DJ. She Have absolutely wants to look darker. I was hosting that night. That's how we met. And he approached you? Well, a, fr a mutual friend. Okay. I saw him in the DJ, but I was like, damn, he's cute. No and lighting makes her look like she's we're black. Mutual friends yep. with. And That's she's like, the oh, that's point. my brother, come here. And even not even she told me he was married. You look a mess. You look a mess. Rings or anything like that. You know what's the real key key? I've actually partied with the whole Breakfast Club right before they got the actual Breakfast Club. It was like the lead up. Partied with all of them. Charlamagne and Angelique. Oh, Angelique. Oh, yeah, we know. We know. Had a few shots with the weirdo. Yeah, we know. She, she said weirdo. it. No, I'm calling her one. Oh, you're hanging out with him. Some of the Breakfast yeah, Club so, people. No, no, no. Let's go back. Go so ahead. I call him. I literally, when she said that his wife, I hung the call MV. And he's panicking. Please, don't say nothing. I have to save half of everything. She's taking, she's gonna try to take away everything from me. Please, 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 please. I have to try to, just don't say anything. Don't pick up no calls, da 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 So I'm over here, I've never been in this situation. Here's this man that's been dolting over me, showering me, you know, I'm starting to fall for him. I spent a lot of time with him. Like, he, this man done flew me and all my friends out to Miami. We, did, we were living our best life up and down New York City, holding hands, like, we were very public. Like, yeah. That's because nobody really knew him at the time and nobody really knew Gia. So he thought he was free to just do whatever. Very public. Proudly. So wait, so is he at the time like, cause- it, He was just a DJ at that time. Say, he didn't it, have Breakfast Club. He was gotcha. just landing the syndicated. She's calling Angela a weirdo because she felt like as a woman, Angela should have gave her a heads up that he was married and she didn't. It, and then turn around later after the fact and judge Erica like she's some, you know, some hoe that knew. When you know she didn't know because you were there, you know, playing it cool for your homeboy. Deal. So you knew about that. So y'all y'all will have conversations. I mean. You thought this whole time he was your man. I mean, yeah. He would be at home doing DJ DJing for the radio and I would be on Face, like on the phone watching him and in his house. You hear the kids upstairs. So I didn't think anything of it until that point. So how did it end? It ended, okay, so I called him and, and he was insisting that I didn't wow. say anything. And that night, you know, I was thrown off. We didn't even meet up with him. So wait, I just want y'all to recognize she's saying that he was at the house DJing, probably downstairs, wife and kids are upstairs, and because wife and kid think he's just doing his job talking to people, however, whatever, you know, you don't know what he's doing, you can't hear, he has music on, so he's sitting there with you on FaceTime. And to me, you got to know that there are men, when they cheat, they like the fact that they're almost getting caught. They like the fact that they're doing something sneaky. And that's the space that he was obviously in when he was fucking around with her. He liked having her as a sneaky link and the possibility of getting caught made it even more exciting, which is why you would do low down dirty shit. Like had his girl on fucking FaceTime on the phone or, you know, whatever. Cause I'm like, did they have FaceTime back then? We're going to have to check her. Like what year was this? So days later, I'm getting blown up and he's on air dogging you out. What did he say about you on air? Um, something to the fact of like how he cheated with someone that was um, beneath him. That whole stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when that happened, I was like, okay, so this is what he's doing. He's trying to say half of everything, I get it. But why run me through the mud when you knew I didn't know? So in order to save his marriage, he had to diminish the relationship he had with you. I wouldn't even think it. to diminish because at that point it was like, I was too scared to call him and he wasn't calling me after that particular night that I got the phone. He's like, please don't say nothing, don't pick up. She never called me back after that. Couple of days pass, this fool is on radio trying to save half of everything. And at one point I was just like, okay, I'm never gonna speak to him again regardless. Okay, just making sure I don't sure care if he doesn't call me. So I was okay with us not being in communication because it was like, married like no I, I got what I got apology. I could walk away lesson learned you know and that was my first real lesson like oh these men really be out here living double lives like they have kids but the kid's mother is their wife you know that was the reality of like oh you know growing up we don't really see marriages and stuff like that growing up so it wasn't you know I didn't think like oh the kid is he married he has kids I'm just thinking oh he has a baby mama because I was kind of my situation ignorant thinking but yeah it's giving more at that time definitely didn't this is my first industry relationship, technically. 
real deal. First industry. Well, Raul too, but I mean like real yeah, forefront. Yeah, this is different. This is yeah, different. It's different. And he was able to shower me with gifts and stuff, which is, I never had that. Yeah, so was, no. Whenever niggas love, whenever niggas with money love bomb young girls, I don't ever judge them. I don't. <laughs> Like, motherfuckers is out here scratching and surviving good times, and a man that they're actually attracted to gives them a whole bunch of money and gifts? Yeah. Please stop playing in my face, acting like you wouldn't took it in your 20s. It's like a different embracement. I was loving it, and I, who wouldn't, you know? But then to get smacked with that reality, I was like, oh, okay, then. So when I didn't hear from him, I actually didn't even care either, you know, until the radio stuff All happened. All y'all. And that's when it was just like, wait. And then that's what set the tone for this narrative that I knew and I went along with it. You know what I'm saying? And it's up, especially on his point, because it's like, you know, you having daughters yourself, you know, to dog me out the way you did just to save face. I mean, you could at least give me a decent heads up if you're going to go that low. But I mean, you listen to it, you can tell. Every word was to... Get every word he back. used to, to kind of bring me down was his building, box, building block in desperation to try to fix his broken home. And I don't want to talk about it too much because it's safe to say they, they, they're still together. Mm -hmm. God bless them. And they have beautiful kids that are old enough. Yes. But, I, but I do feel like I am old to clarify on my behalf this narrative that he was able to paint because he had the outlet he had. He said, they moved on. I know Gia. I, I just feel like it, it's now, important. The thing, this is your time to tell your story. And I think what you said is right. I know them too. They're great people. They, they stay together. And they told their story. And They even wrote a book about it. Yeah, and this is your story. And, yeah. it's, and it's not and I, and I, and, and I, I, I don't want to, you know, especially knowing that they have old enough kids and, and just out of the respect for the fact that they are, they made it through yeah. whatever they went yeah. through, you know? And obviously it was a dark time, you know, for him and her when I was unknowingly in this. Yeah up scenario, you know, but I just want that narrative to please just kind of be cleared on my behalf because yeah. it's like, it's not okay, yeah. you know? And then, you know, when things happened with my marriage, it's like, oh, good right. for you, karma, because of what you did to that wife. And it's like, it might be karma. Yeah, I never felt like that karma shit. Like you get what you put out, but essentially to act as if she's getting her karma with Safari because of the shit with DJ Envy and Gia, nah, no. I, I don't I don't believe in that. Not like that. Um, I do believe that a lot of people cheat. Most people cheat. Most people don't handle their relationships in the best way all the time. And that is why you're going to always get situations like this. It's prevalent in the community. But not from that. And being stuck with the narrative. Yes. Like yeah. Because, you know, it's unfortunate that the way that they did me on the radio is what set the tone. And, and Mona needed that Breakfast Club plug. So she wasn't going to If that's the case, everybody's getting their karma. going on in real time on Love & Hip Hop. I've never been given that opportunity. They needed that breakfast club relationship so they could promote if they ever need to send somebody over there. Mm. Politics is everything. Because you know how many times I said, wait, this man literally is on radio saying X, Y, and Z. Like, I need to talk about this. You know, but it was never allowed to. I was never allowed to because of relationships. Wow. You know. So a lot of people think Safari tricked you because we did see you two meet they for the think? first time. Well, allegedly. Don't <laughs> allegedly me. <laughs> because... Oh, Scared Famous, this VH1 special, he was going hard in the paint for you. And you were sort of like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And then... He was going hard before I even went on that show. Oh. What was it about him that you just weren't instantly attracted to him? I knew. I know. I, I, I just knew he was like this player. He reaped it. Like he re you know what's funny? The first time I actually he was is introduced a bitch to nigga. Safari, he was with a, a, I wouldn't say a friend, but someone that I would see around LA and hang out every once in a while. Like, you know, you know, you go on this party scene, you don't necessarily hang out with certain people when you're in a party environment, they're there too. So you kind of like turn up with these people. So anyway, um, he was with a girl that I knew of and she introduced me and right then and there, he's like, you are so, in front of her, in front of her. You are so, damn, I didn't know you was this. And, and right then and there, I was like, oh, this is disrespectful. This man is literally, praising me on how beautiful I am right in front of this woman that he's actually with. Disrespectful. Red flag. So I was just like, ew. So what made you give in to him finally? Consistency. He was ew. consistent. Oh, it took a long time. Mm-hmm. A long, long A year plus. A year plus. This man had to go through my friends, family. <laughs> yeah. He definitely pulled out all the stops. Mm hmm He actually would speak to my friends, manager, Certain family members. Not I hope she let Tyrese hit it one good time. More than me. I doubt it. At that time, it was like if he would text me, I would send him back an emoji or not even reply at all. 
So he actually went after me, but not going through me. He went through people I knew that we were mutual friends up to. One of my friends went to high school with him. One of my really good friends at the time went to high school. So it was like kind of like he, he found his way. But it took but a long time. I was married him. It years. was a dick. Three Absolutely. years he courted you? Three years. Scare Famous helped. Wow. Helped him a lot. Because <laughs> you saw him differently. Yes, I told y'all that. Dad I and, told y'all that. I was um, watching that show. Because how hard he went. Because at first, you even see him on the show, I thought it was just, he was, that was his tactic to win. Yeah. Because I was definitely a competitor. I was not trying to lose. So I thought that was his tactic to, to soften me up in this and third. But in this, when I died on the show, the producer was like, so far, he's so depressed the last day. Like, I guess he really likes you. So, you know, and, and then- Playing a role. Playing a role. Just not right to send me home. They brought me back from the dead. And boy, was that man happier than I don't know what. And I was like, oh, that was the first, oh, for me. Like, oh, he actually he was, was like, he like picked me up, spun me around. Like this man was genuinely, everybody ran when I got up. And he was playing a fucking role. Of the, the grave. And he was like, Erica. And I was like, oh. <laughs> he really likes me. Yeah. He really likes and me. And then, you know, but you know what's crazy? I did everything in my power for him not to. And I was surprised um, you were with Safari because one thing I know about relationships, when you are, this huge personality, um, the face of the show, all these things. Typically women like you and men, um, we don't date somebody who also is into the spotlight like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we tend to date the reserved guy and when he also loves the spotlight. And the, the oh, is that why you date the reserved guy, Carlos? Is that why? Is that why? Oh, okay, because I heard it's because a lot of y'all niggas like straight niggas. That, that's what I heard, but okay. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I was always curious if there was competition in your marriage. I don't know. Mm, that's so funny because <sighs> I wish I could. I'm only on year three, by the way, of parallel parenting with this person. So, and now that, that I'm co-parenting, you call it parallel. Parallel parenting. Meaning it's like. It's like sometimes we fit into the sparky space and sometimes we don't. Okay. <laughs> um, and just, you know, we're not always on the same page, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. So, um, but it's only year three and ugh, we're not even close to five. Um, Was there competition? Yeah. I... You better lay mm. low. I wouldn't wish a Jamaican man with good I dick on like my that. worst enemy. It's the That's worst. Without getting into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the one thing I know too, which, which I do respect by the way, at the end of the day, um, he is the father of your very small children and you wanna be very respectful to that. Safe to say, us being, my whole heartbreak and, and, and the way I was dog walked by him has been viral for like the what, last two and a half years. I know the world is sick of talking about us because I'm sick mm -hmm. of having to. <laughs> So, okay, good. And now that I'm no longer getting paid, yeah. I do want to be selective in what I say because I feel like enough is already out there. The world has witnessed a lot. And um, regardless to what now, we still have these kids. And, and I, I don't know if we'll ever genuinely get to a place where we're like on the same page about our children and how we're going to raise them and how, what his priorities should be when it comes to them. But I do want to manifest that. My last question with that is, do you feel like he love bombed you? I was in the hospital before even the baby came, trying to prevent the baby from coming. And I was a wife, pregnant, on bed rest. The only person I saw was Dr. Jackie and nurses while I was on bed rest. And, you know, pregnancy and child labor is one of the most dangerous things a woman could experience. My life was on the line. Our child was on the line. And nothing was on the line for him. Just that trip to Jamaica, which we all saw. He had a great time. Mm. And did he love bomb me? I'm not an expert. I think the world can definitely answer that as far as what they feel. But I definitely feel now that I know better, he never really genuinely loved me. No. I was, for the moment. He's a narc. He's a narc, y'all. I don't know if y'all paid attention. As far as a narc. I was convenient for him. And. Yeah, for the show. All of that. 
a check, attractive, the look. Right. Whatever it was in that moment that he benefited from, which, you know, <laughs> because rates went up and offers came through, you know. So there's definitely a big benefit, you know, especially in the way life leveled up and the way he was living from where when I met him, how he was living to how he was living when he got with me. Child Safari don't even love himself. Um, but yeah, I don't think he genuinely really loved me now that I know better. And that's not why he didn't love her. This will be my first time talking seen. about he didn't love her because okay he recognized she didn't love herself. That's not know. true at all. That's not true. Please don't ever repeat that nowhere. That relationship sucked. Life out of me. Because anybody that really I loves you for forever. Anybody that really loves you is gonna love you whether you love yourself or not. Just like anybody that's actually respectful is gonna respect you no matter if you respect yourself or not. People dishonor themselves every day. They disrespect their own feelings and what they want every day to put somebody else first and people please and put themselves last. So trust me, motherfuckers really do not care about whether you love or respect yourself. They're going to be who they are regardless. I married with the intention to be led, protected. Um, now she whispering and shit. I married thinking... He had the mental capacity to to lead us as a family and build us. And that and that was your mistake for thinking that Safari Samuels was gonna lead you anywhere. Why? You've been leading yourself this whole fucking time. As a, as, as a one, as one vessel. And y'all was in the same place. And honestly, I think that's really where I lost him. I lost him when we had to do real life. Mm. When it was like, okay, there's no more roses. All over the place. We're not surrounded by fairy yeah. tale life is happening now. God is testing our 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 yeah. union. I believe her. That is usually how this shit happens. Our capabilities. Um when life started to happen and he has to be responsible for someone other than himself. When he has to think for someone other than himself. When he has to make moves out of respect for someone other than themselves. That's when I lost him. It took me a long time to, to be honest that I put so much responsibility on him when we got married. Honestly, I don't think there's a such thing as nagging, really. I don't. I think if a motherfucker doing what they're supposed to be doing, there's no need to nag. If you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, you'll probably get nagged. But I also feel like what I've learned is it doesn't matter whether I ask nicely or I nag you about it. Are you going to fucking do it or not? Nah? Just because all my life I've been having to do it all by myself. I finally thought half of them. My struggle, my every day could be evened out with my partner. I'm not in this by myself anymore. She don't know you what know, a husband look like. That's why she didn't know what she was looking at. Because you don't know what you're looking for. You ain't never seen it. I could be soft for the first time in my life. And I got too soft. And I let too much slide. I got too submissive. I was too... I let too much go for too long. I believe her. And on top of putting these expectations that I thought would come hand in hand with a husband, it was just too much for him. Everybody thought they was in a fucking fairy tale. And I keep telling y'all marriage and relationships, long term relationships are not fucking fairy tales. Stop fantasizing and romanticizing the shit. Get the Disney princess movie out your fucking head. And then a baby that he didn't want. Came put the cherry on top. So, you know, I would give anything in the world to change how we ended and um, and have it not be so bad. Um, because it's embarrassing to know that 
I finally gave this person a chance and I had this magical fairy tale wedding. And here I am present and ready to be the wife that I know I am very capable of being. And if for it to all mean nothing when life isn't peaches and when life isn't, you know, easy. When we got married, pandemic happened. Mm -hmm. So we made it through a lot together, considering very quickly in, in our marriage, but as things progressed and I expected him to do what a man's supposed to do, and when I, um, and, and you know, it, it got to a point, he was hurting me so bad, Carlos, that I didn't give a fuck. I, didn't, I was hurting so bad that I wanted to match and I've said some ugly things to him. Um, I believe her. Even with that, I wish I could go back and change, you know, just because at the end of the day, yeah, was I hurting bad? Was it called for? Probably. But at the same time, this man was my husband. And I should have never used my power to make someone that was, regardless of my husband, feel any less. Because messing with a man's, whatever ego they have, is not an easy thing to come back from. But at the same time, I was pushed to the point of beyond hurt. You know? I think the trick is making you think that you could have done something different when at the end of the day, a lot of what you are doing was in response. I do believe that y'all y'all know I don't really like Erica, but, and I don't like all of this manipulative shit that she's doing, the baby talking, the coloring herself darker, the not lighting her so she can look darker, the, the using the kids on the show. Like I see all of the manipulation tools that she's employing to make herself look like a victim. And, and we can argue about that all day. But when it comes to this safari shit, y'all, I believe everything she is saying, because I feel like he does the same things in all of the relationships. I hope she called him a monkey. <laughs> A lot of it was public. The flaunting of women, you know, not helping me financially with the kids, but. She might as well when she called all other black people. For the moment and, and the torment and the, you know, even brought one on the show. And it was just like, we're not even, I don't understand why I deserved it that bad. Because I love the f that man. Like I would have done anything for him, anything. I believe her. I even sat up there and, and got us marriage counseling. You paid for marriage counseling yourself? Yeah, just to try to save us. Like once I found out the baby was coming and I knew he really didn't, he wasn't fond of that idea, I knew I was like, I have to do something drastic to try to help us and yeah. But at that point, you know, it's just like, I was pregnant, bed rest, then the baby comes, NICU, he's all over Jamaica. Like I was just going through it. I was just in so much pain. It built up, built up, built up, built up, built up that, you know, finally towards the end, I just was so ruthless with the things I said. Which is why you called Spice a monkey and we're supposed to forgive you? I think not. My breaking point, I find, because I was really holding my own. Like, even when he first did the whole post about divorce court with him outside the mm -hmm. house and all that stuff, you know, no matter how embarrassed I was, or I was really trying still. Because to me, it's like reality TV or not. This is my husband. And Kurt could have three babies on Rashida and make it through. <laughs> and we've also seen worse stuff. You know, and people make it through, you know, and I three babies on Rashida. We're not going to pull that out that she said Kirk had three babies on Rashida. <laughs> I, um, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's. So I'm, I'm always okay keep it a buck about this marriage shit. Working out. I'm gonna always keep it a buck about this marriage shit because I feel like the generations before us lied to us. Our generation, we looking at that shit and saying, nah, like we, we want partners. We want these dynamics of family and shit, but we don't want to have to like lie to kick it the way our people and everybody else did. It's not healthy no matter what anybody, you know, how everybody thinks they turned out all right and shit. Yeah, you alive, but a lot of us are struggling. I'm okay with it now. It took me a long time though, because it was like, damn. But my whole thing was like, how the hell was it so good to end so bad? And why the hell did you? go this hard for me just to end up doing me like this. That was the whole thing that I was just, that was making me sick. And then finally, I just, one day I just had a moment where it died and I just asked him to like, help me understand why I'm still caring enough and, and then help me to not care anymore. You, you know, it, it, the realization of like, you care so much another person cares nothing when you have to. Yeah, that's hard. That head on. That's hard. It, hurts. Mm. it hurt me so much. It sucked the life out of me. I was on that reunion stage with a bag yeah. of bones and a chunky Giuseppe heel. 
Um, mm-hmm. It was true. You looked a mess. Listen, the elephant in the room is the monkey comments. Part two. Part two coming up. Part two. You know what's crazy, Carlos? Hey, Raindrops. Tune in next Tuesday, October 31st at 9 a.m. Eastern to catch my exclusive part two interview with Erica Mena. All right, girl. Well, y'all know I won't be here. <laughs> y'all know I won't be here, child. I'll be in the motherland. Willa, willa, way. 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 Oh, na, na, na. Okay. I will not be here. Um, So I might have to catch y'all when the bitch come back. Okay. Either way, um, yeah, Erica Mena attempted to make us feel sorry for her so that she can get some more jobs because she's been losing them. But I am not fooled. I am not fooled. Not near, not by far. I'm not feeling it. I'm looking at it as the manipulation that it is. I will always have sympathy for women being put in situations that I feel like they can't help but to get into like relationships and things of this nature. Um, yes, yes, yes. Y'all know my members. We will probably have a, uh, our first conversation about Jada's book this week. I'm going to try, um, as my next members only live, we'll see. But yeah, y'all, that's, that's what they got for, for the first part with Erica Mena. Um, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I don't care. I, I just don't care. <laughs> Girl, I don't care. I can't. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for coming by. I hope y'all enjoyed. Like the video. Share the video with your people. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. I got some other stuff coming for y'all this week. So make sure your notifications are turned on. You are glued into my channel, girl. My members, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I will see everybody. Um, let's see. Tomorrow, Love and Hip Hop.